Welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and the subject of today's video, well, we're going to stay with the subject of lean and we're going to look at a very important subject and it's about batch sizes and how batch sizes, changing your batch sizes can destroy your process performance. Uh, this is a, as a, is a result of a recent conversation I had with my client where they were saying they were beginning to increase batch sizes and move completely away from uh, lean, lean behaviours. It also links nicely to a recent video I made about why your computer doesn't work and why pull systems do. I've left a link just below so if you want to see that video as well then please take a look because it does link into some of the concepts that we're going to talk about here. But we're going to talk about batch sizes and how dangerous batch sizes can be. How batch size, how dangerous they can be to your process performance. They seem like such an easy answer in some cases to simple solutions like more capacity or more efficiency. But increasing your batch sizes, are, it is the road to hell. So let's set up a little scenario and we'll talk about what happens when you increase batch sizes. So let's consider the idea that we have four customer orders, four individual customer orders and they're all for a hundred. A hundred happens to be the current accepted batch size and it is the batch size that we've put in our computer. So what we would normally do, because the planning system would generate this situation where the four orders would be produced in batches of a hundred, one behind the other, by the way, we're going to suggest also that we are promising the customer. So we've got a lead time that we're promising the customer and we'll say that that lead time is one month. And if we make those four orders like that, there's our lead time. We get the four orders out in the specified lead time. Obviously in between each of these orders, we have some setup time. And we're going to suggest that the setup time, there's some at the beginning there as well. We're going to suggest that the setup time is four hours. So we get the orders out. Everything is right with the world. But when you look at this and you're looking for better numbers, maybe you're looking to squeeze an extra order in, so you're looking for more capacity, or maybe you look and maybe your productivity isn't as high as your senior managers want it to be. An easy way, potentially a lazy way, to find extra time is to simply increase the batch size. And this is something that this client was talking about. They said, oh, we're moving away from smaller batches, we're going to bigger and bigger batches. And I said to them, that's, that's the road to disaster. Because now, let's think about this, you could easily save some setup time here by driving the batch sizes and doubling them up to 200. And of course, you immediately halve the number of setups. So we immediately gain ourselves eight hours worth of productive time, potentially. But look what we've just done. We've just upset two customers. We cannot now meet the lead time because we, we can't, by doubling the batch size, you immediately run out of capacity. And then people start saying, oh, well, we haven't, we haven't supplied, we haven't got a good on time in full. So your on time in full starts to travel downwards, even though your productivity is going upwards. And they say, oh, we are out of capacity. So then there's a danger that you go, well, why don't we increase the batch size again? And now we start doing them in 400s, like this. 
Now, I don't even have enough room on the board here to put this plan together. Yeah, but now we're doing one order instead of four orders, but we've only got one set of time, so we've just got the four just got the four hours there. Look at the look at the productivity gains. Look at the capacity we've got. And people keep saying we're out of capacity, we're out of capacity, because we, we don't have enough machine time to make all the orders to satisfy the customers. Well, whenever anybody says we are out of capacity, there is one simple question to ask. How much finished stock do you have? How much work in progress do you have? If your company is buried in finished goods, is buried in work in progress, where did that extra stock come from? You have plenty of capacity. What you've done is made your batch sizes too big. Your on time in full numbers will hit the floor if you increase uh, batch sizes. It is the road to hell. Not only that, if you arbitrarily move these numbers around, when your computer thinks that batch sizes are 100, let's look what happens down your supply chain. You see, your supply, your computer thinks that this is going to happen. So what your computer has done is it's primed the supply chain to send material in in this pattern. You see, we need materials in these quantities to arrive over the period of the month. So you've got this equal delivery to match what's going to happen. That's what the computer thinks is going to happen. So that's what it's told the supply chain to do. So all your suppliers now are geared up for this pattern. And by the way, the forecast will never look different to this because you're never changing this in the computer. If you don't put this number in the computer, your supply chain will always think that that's the pattern. So you just do a very simple thing and you double, you double the batch size. Well, what does that immediately do? It immediately tells the computer that you've got to bring that order forward. So suddenly you're telling your suppliers, Oh, I'm awful sorry, we don't want 100 there. What we now want is 200 there, and we don't want this order now. So you okay, take that out. And, yeah. So they've suddenly got to bring all the material forward that they've been planning. Now, there's, there's a good chance they may not be able to do this. So just think what's happened. You've changed the plan, you've increased the batch size. You've now told all your supply chain that there's a new pattern where we want 200 of everything to appear here now. Maybe one of your suppliers though says, but I can't do that, we've checked. We just can't get the order to you fast enough. We can get 150 to you, but we can't get 200. So now what do you do? Well, of course, the planner replans. So he goes into a whole rework process now where he goes, oh, flipping egg. Can't do a batch of uh, 200 there. I'll do a batch of 150. And so, and, and then he brings everything forward and he rewrites the plan. Now, don't forget that we've now told all our supply chain to do this. But there's only one company said they can't. The fact that we backed off the plan now won't stop the other material from coming in. The computer never reverses excess material. It only tells you you're gonna be short of material. So now what happens? Well, now you make this plan, but material arrives for the 200 from all the other suppliers. What do you end up with in the warehouse? You end up with plus 50 of everything. So suddenly, you've got stock in the warehouse all over the, all over the place. So you've increased the batch size, your on time in full is falling to pieces, your supply chain is all over the place because now they're delivering materials into you that you never needed because they can't deal with the fact that you're going 
make 100, make 200, now I'll make 400. Oh no, I can't make 400, well in that case, we'll reduce it down to 300. You're constantly changing the plan. And of course, what your computer constantly keeps putting out is it constantly keeps saying to them, we're going to do this because the static data in the computer is stuck at 100. But what you're doing, look, you're pushing this out and you're running out of capacity. The bigger you make the batch sizes, you need to change this. You need to tell them that the lead time is no longer a month. So not only should you change the batch size, you should tell what you're you should change what you're telling your customers because you don't do that. You keep promising a month's lead time. You keep increasing the batches for more capacity. You're on time in full, falls to pieces. And you keep saying, I haven't got enough capacity. And yet you've got stock of material everywhere because of course you only needed a hundred to satisfy the customer. So if you've made this hundred, You've got 300 here of this. You made the order for 100 there. You've got 300 of this. So you've got finished good stock everywhere, but your on time in full delivery is terrible. If you increase batch sizes to try and find more capacity or to try to find more capability, more performance in terms of uh, efficiency, you will simply destroy your company and all of your numbers will travel completely in the wrong direction. It is the road to hell. What you should do, you know, if you don't like this four here, what should you do? You should work to engineer that away. You should do setup reduction work and reduce this down from four to two and get the capacity that way if you really need it. But actually increasing batch sizes in fact, moving batch sizes. So if you let your planner go 400, then 150, then 100, then 200, then 400, then 300. If you allow your planner to do that, you create absolute chaos in your supply chains. You will end up with stock everywhere and you never seem to have the right stock to make the right thing. And you're on time in full, goes to the floor. Batch sizes, if you move batch sizes around, it is absolutely the road to hell. This is how important batch sizes are to your process performance. The smaller the batch size, the better you service the customer, the more money you will make. Small batch sizes make more money. Leave them where they are and attack the setup time. Small batch sizes make more money.